Hi there. On weekends, we do reruns so that yours truly can take a couple days off. Look for a fresh new episode on Monday. Meanwhile, please enjoy this episode from this day from a previous year. Thank you so much for your indulgence and loyalty, and have a great weekend. Enjoy! Hi there, and welcome to This Day in History. Today we're going to enjoy a rerun from a previous year. Thank you so much, and enjoy. Hello, and welcome to This Day in History for December 30th. December 30th is the 364th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar. Only one more day left. Sanskrit is an ancient Indian language that has given many words to English directly, such as orange, nirvana, and mantra and also indirectly, such as guru, kot, and jute, by way of daughter languages, or by another language which borrowed them from Sanskrit first, such as zen, candy, or lilac. Right along now, we're exploring words that have their origins in Sanskrit, and today's word is swami. Swami is a noun that means religious teacher, mystic, or yogi, a learned man, a pundit, a Hindu religious teacher. Swami is used as a title of respect. The etymology of this word is that it is from Hindi Swami, which means master, from Sanskrit Swami, which means master or lord. Ultimately, it's from an Indo-European root, from which we also get the words self, sibling, suicide, secret, sober, sullen, idiot, and the Irish Sinn Féin, which means literally, we ourselves. The earliest documented use of this word is 1773. And with that, we're going to start in the year 1853, when the southern U.S. border was established. James Gadsden, the U.S. Minister to Mexico, and General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, the President of Mexico, signed the Gadsden Purchase in Mexico City. The treaty settled a dispute over the location of the Mexican border west of El Paso, Texas, and established the final boundaries of the southern United States. For the price of $15 million, later reduced to $10 million, the United United States acquired approximately 30,000 square miles of land in what is now southern New Mexico and Arizona. Prime Minister Hideki Tojo was born on this date in 1884. You might remember we spoke of him earlier this month when he was executed. General Tojo had been one of the most outspoken proponents of preventative war against the United States. He also oversaw the systematic massacre and starvation of civilians and prisoners of war, never a winning proposition. The Iroquois Theater was designed by Benjamin Marshall in a Renaissance style and was highly luxurious. It had been deemed fireproof upon its opening in 1903. In fact, George Williams, Chicago's building commissioner and fire inspector Ed Laughlin looked over the theater in November of 1903 and declared that it was fireproof beyond all doubt. They also noted its 30 exits, 27 of which were double doors. However, at the same time, William Clendenin, the editor of Fireproof Magazine, also inspected the Iroquois and wrote a scathing editorial about its fire dangers, pointing out that there was a great deal of wood in the trim, and no fire alarm, and no sprinkler system over the stage. And so it is that in a confluence of events during the matinee on December 30th of 1903, a fire started backstage, and any presumed safety measures, of which there were very few, failed utterly. The 27 doors mentioned previously were all locked, for example. More than 600 people died. Several people were charged with various crimes in relation to this event, but the only one who actually served any jail time was the bartender, who relieved the deceased of their money and valuables when his bar was used as a makeshift temporary morgue. American actor, singer, television personality, and beauty agent post Bert Parks was born on this date in 1914. He emceed the Miss America pageant for many years and would sing There She Is, Miss America when the new Miss America 
Bert Parks died in 1992 at the age of 77. Sometime over the course of the night in the early morning of December 29 and 30 of 1916, Grigory Efimovich Rasputin, a self-proclaimed holy man, was murdered by Russian nobles eager to end his influence over the royal family. They first tried to poison him and he seemed completely unaffected by this and then they shot him and then he revived from that so then they beat him and threw him in the river where he was found later frozen. On December 30th of 1922 the USSR was established. In post-revolutionary Russia the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics USSR was established comprising a confederation of Russia, Belarusia, Ukraine, and the Transcaucasian Federation divided in 1936 into the Georgian, Azerbaijan, and Armenian republics. Also known as the Soviet Union, the new communist state was the successor to the Russian Empire and the first country in the world to be based on Marxist socialism. Bo Diddley was born on this date in 1928. He influenced many artists including Buddy Holly, Elvis Presley, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, the Animals, and the Clash. He lived to the age of 79. This is the birthday of the musical artist Skeeter Davis. That's not the name she was born with, but it's a catchy moniker, don't you think? She had a lengthy discography, but is perhaps best known for her song, The End of the World, which I've linked in the show notes for you if you'd like to hear it. Skeeter Davis died from complications of metastasized breast cancer, so Ladies, be sure and get your mammograms. She was 72. American baseball great Sandy Colfax was born on this date in 1935. He played his entire career for the Dodgers, first in Brooklyn and then in Los Angeles. As I read this in 2019, he's still alive. Happy birthday, Sandy Colfax. On December 30th of 1936, a sit-down strike begins in Flint, Michigan. At 8 p.m. on December 30th, 1936, one of the first sit-down strikes in the United States, auto workers occupied the General Motors Fisher Body Plant No. 1 in Flint, Michigan. The auto workers were striking to win recognition of the United Auto Workers, UAW, as the only bargaining agent for GM's workers. They also wanted to make the company stop sending work to non-union plants and to establish a fair minimum wage scale, a grievance system, and a set of procedures that would help protect assembly line workers from injury. In all, the strike lasted 44 days. On this day in 1965, Ferdinand Marcos was inaugurated as president of the Philippines. Marcos's regime would span 20 years and become increasingly authoritarian and corrupt. In 1973, he assumed dictatorship powers under a new constitution. Marcos used the military to suppress subversive elements, but also arrested and jailed his mainstream political opponents. His anti-communist activities won him enthusiastic support from the U.S. government, but his regime was marked by misuse of foreign aid, repression, and political murders. His wife, Imelda Marcos, was appointed to important political posts and lived a famously extravagant lifestyle that included included a massive wardrobe featuring thousands of pairs of shoes, and not cheap ones if I remember correctly. Within a year they'd be big, within two they'd be huge, and within three they'd be the biggest band in the world. But on December 30th, 1968, the quartet of British rockers preparing for their fifth ever gig in the United States were using propane heaters to keep themselves and their equipment warm while they waited to go on as the opening act for Vanilla Fudge at a concert in a frigid college gymnasium in Washington State. We're talking about Led Zeppelin, and someone had a tape recorder with them, and that is the first known recording of Led Zeppelin. December 30th seems to be a good day for music artists' birthdays. Michael Nesmith, Davy Jones, Patti Smith, Jeff Lynne, Del Shannon, and several others were born on December 30th in different years. And that's all I have for you today. As always, links to my research are included in the show notes. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and share it around. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. Authoritarian and corrupt. My salmon's done. I'll be right back. <laughs> Barking.
working dog. Alrighty. Back to work. Okie dokie, Smokey. Smoother. Be smoother. I'm going to have to look at that. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men. See, not a man. See, this is what happens when we're not scripted. <laughs> this is why I don't do live shows. 